Welcome to day 550 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. Remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DSOFI. And DSOFI, of course, is a mobile Web3 app built on the DSO blockchain. So Brian, the crypto market is going up, at least a little bit. Yes, yeah, so the crypto market recaptured a trillion dollars early this morning. Uh, we've seen Bitcoin surge approximately 5% over the last 12 hours. Uh, and the crypto market in general, many other cryptos are kind of following that trend. Uh, with U.S. stocks down over the last two weeks and with the dollar up significantly over the last couple of weeks, I'm actually surprised that the crypto market is holding up, not only holding up, mm -hmm. but going up. Uh, and this, this could, there could be a few reasons for this, but... Uh, Namely, the UK, they saw a, a, they saw the pound drop significantly after the new prime minister, Liz Truss, decided to issue major tax breaks for most citizens of the UK. And the pound, which was trading at $1.17, as, as recently as just last week, fell as much to as far as $1.03. Uh, now it's back up to a dollar oh eight, but still it's a significant drop. Uh, eight percent, I believe it fell. Uh, the euro is also trading at only like ninety six and a half cents to the dollar, which is significant. So maybe some of this drive to crypto has to do with the volatility within the currency markets. That's the only thing I can think of. But I mean, we're, we look at everything in dollars and the dollars are way up compared to all these other currencies or most of these other currencies. Uh, so it's interesting that it's holding up. I, I don't know if this signals a bottom or not. Maybe we hit that bottom at around 17,500. The strength here while the markets in general are kind of floundering uh, kind of stands out to me. Yeah, it's interesting. But you think if the dollar is up, then the price of crypto should be down relative to the dollar. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But moving on, um, Goldberry pointed this out to us yesterday. Goldberry's always on top of everything. Even before Pearl made their announcement, Goldberry said, check this out with Pearl. And that is that you can now have subscribers. <clears throat> so Pearl had two big updates, uh, two big announcements that they announced last night. And this came after Goldberry discovered it. Uh, you can now share content exclusively with paid subscribers. So your content is going to show up in post feeds, but if it's exclusive to your subscribers, it's going to be blurred out for the non-subscribers. And subscriptions are going to cost $4.99, and they can be enabled if you just go to your Pearl profile. You can just enable subscriptions, and people can start subscribing to you for $4.99. Coin holders for a subscriber will also now earn royalties. So if you own the creator coin in someone who is opening their profile up to subscribers, you're going to be able to earn royalties for this, which I think is really, really awesome. Uh, royalties are going to be sh a share of subscription earnings that are distributed to the creator's coin holders. But we have to keep in mind that this is running through Apple and Apple is taking a 30% fee. So once Apple take, it's up to a 30% fee. So it might be slightly less than that, but it's up to 30%. So once Apple takes that fee off the top, the creators are going to receive 80% of this. So for each subscriber, they're going to be getting 80% of $5, so approximately $4 or so. And the remaining coin holders are going to get 20%, so $1 approximately. That's if there were no Apple fees, but you get the point. So... I think this is amazing. I think this is a, just what DSO needs for creator coins. Pearl's also rolling out updates to their creator coins, and they didn't say exactly what, but there's going to be additional updates to the creator coins in the next few weeks. And they also have opened early access globally, and they're working on an Android build that they hope to get submitted to this app store soon. So what do you make of all this, Brian? Yeah, n number one, I, I love this. I think we needed something that would drive a fundamental reason for owning a creator coin. And this does just that with 20% going to the creator coin. Uh, I think that the 499 fee, I think that's a perfect number right now, but I definitely believe 
that they should allow creators to adjust that. Yeah. Uh, I imagine they will. I, I'm guessing that this is just a trial, uh, but maybe like a two ninety nine option, nine ninety nine option, maybe even just, just custom. allow allow any price, you know, and. And, and, and I, th I think that if you combine what they're doing with Creator Coins here with the possibility that Natter talked about Creator Coin version 2.0, where they might might kind of lower the slope on the bonding curve, I think this is a recipe to kind of reignite some excitement about Creator Coins. And maybe we'll do a subscription soon and, and see how it plays out. I just don't know exactly what we have to offer. So we'll have to think of something maybe. Yeah, I don't know why well, I think that over. Uh, but it's interesting they're doing it through Apple and Apple's taking this fee, so it's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. And I guess the subscriptions, the creator coin holders earn based on how many coins they hold, and or is that going, or is it going into the creator coin, like buying creator coin? We don't have all those details. I assume that it's just being distributed to the coin holders based on the percentage of coins. That they hold that's that's interesting like i would have assumed the opposite that it would just be buying the creator coin but but i don't know i, I think we'll find more out about see, that see, with this bonding soon. curve and that's with this bonding curve that's kind of doesn't help once the creator coin gets to a certain price though so you know like i don't know i feel like right now it'd be better to do the other way where you just split the profits equally among based on the percentage you hold but I, I guess maybe somebody from pearl can uh reply maybe happy penguin can reply and give us more information on that yeah so moving on natter pointed out that according to the roadmap that he released two weeks ago the deso dollar is next to be tackled by the core team and he said it's been in the works for months and he said it's, quote, a breakthrough stablecoin that will enable low-fee USD transactions on DSO. Uh, DSO dollar will be fully backed and fully exchangeable and interoperable with the USDC token. So that, that's really interesting. Uh, I'm, I, I think that there's going to, I think that this makes things easier for people coming onto DSO. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I do too. I, I think it's something that DSO kind of needs if they want to reach out to the masses and, you, you know, kind of take over social media from a Web3 standpoint. People, Everybody's not into crypto. Everybody's not in, doesn't even know how to buy crypto. So I think being able to use the DSO dollar to kind of just allow for US dollar transactions is going to be huge for DSO. Yeah. Uh, so talking about DSO dollar, <clears throat> my DSO dollar is continuing. Uh, and you might recall that the account was formerly known as the DSO dollar account uh, <clears throat> before core team took it back. Uh, and it's going to be continuing by minting DSO dollar NFTs of OGs on DSO under the My DSO dollar account. And this is, of course, created by Peter H. Uh, it's really, the designs are pretty awesome. Uh, all you have to do is let him know that you want one created and send him an image and he will create one for you. He's done one by, uh, around us, both of us. We both have our face on a single bill. Pretty No, cool. I don't think so. There's not one of us yet. He's asking us. I just saw it. one. Really? I saw. Well, maybe he went ahead and made it then. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll post it. You can see it here. But uh, yeah, Very cool. moving on, what, what's happening with NFTZ? Yeah, so NFTZ, as you know, we have a new UI, we have a new UX, and we're working on integrating with Ethereum. But first we decided, because many people in the community have has been asking for it, that we create timed auctions. So right now, M. Van Halen is working diligently on coding for timed auctions. And it's trickier than you may think because you have to use derived keys to allow for auctions to be ended and for sales to and for bids to be accepted. So it's being worked on. No time frame yet. Hopefully soon though. I don't think it's gonna take too long. But we're doing it outside of the core team. So it's not the actual timing in the timed auction section won't actually be on chain. Uh, so you'll need to use NFTZ for the timed auctions. I think this is this has a lot of potential to bring excitement back to the NFT space. I think, you know, I imagine maybe holding some Twitter spaces rooms where you 
talk about some of the auctions that are ending within the next 15 minutes. I, I think there's a lot of potential there. It brings excitement back. It doesn't have to rely on when a creator decides to end the auction or if, like, if their timing is right or, you know, like if somebody puts a bid in the last second and maybe it's a two seconds after it ended and what does it buy, what does a creator do? I think this is going to solve a lot of those issues. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I think that one thing that timed auctions does do is it it kind of makes people talk. And DSO is great at communication and bringing people together. So I, I think that this is a feature that the DSO community can in particularly take advantage of uh, because of the communications layers that's built into everything. Yeah, we have some ideas for the commenting, like maybe have like, so you can now comment on NFTs on nftz.me. But maybe during auctions, maybe those comments can be highlighted and people can kind of trash talk each other and egg each other on while bidding. We'll have to, we'll have to see what we can do with that. Yeah. But, but moving on, I, I just want to say get well soon to Dr. Rob. Uh, Dr. Rob has been hospitalized. I'm not sure what the reason is for, but he has still been spreading positivity on DSO from his hospital bed. Dr. Rob's an awesome OG of DSO. You know, he's a musician, very talented. Uh, he's a huge community member he's at in all those clubhouse rooms from back in the day the music rooms that michelle lord used to hold uh just get well soon dr rob hope you're out of the hospital soon and back posting a lot on DSO. yeah get well dr rob moving on uh d social world so we talked about this a little bit last week uh seals had been sponsoring them incredibly for 26 straight weeks and they're sponsoring the post to earn section on the social world where they pay out the people who are making the most quality posts on DSO. But SEALs decided they're not going to renew that sponsorship. Uh, they're moving on to some other things. So D social world was looking for a new sponsor and NFTZ, we at NFTZ decided that we would sponsor them through the end of the year. And I, we're looking forward to this partnership with them. Uh, We've had several other partnerships with them in the past. Love what Ada is doing. Love what the social world is doing. Love posts to earn. And I can't wait to see people continue to earn by posting on the social world. And unfortunately, we were, we were winning that award almost every week. We will no longer be able to participate since we are involved in the sponsorship. So if somebody biased, else has a chance to win. Biased or conflict of interest, maybe. But yeah, uh, I... I, we wanted to do this because we believe that uh, helping helping each other is kind of what DSO is all about and providing the social world with a little bit of extra money to work with and build with, I think can go a long way. Ado has spent incredibly responsibly. He gets a lot done with very little. And I, I think that this is going to allow Ado to continue to uh, really iterate on things and add features. And I'm sure after we're done, Hopefully, DSO is even more vibrant and somebody will take our spot at the beginning of the next year. Exactly. So, one Delinsky of Vibe Hut has just announced something pretty incredible, and that is that Daniel Rizzi, he's a co founder of We Watch, and he's also an IP lawyer. He's going to host a weekly office hour on Vibe Hut dedicated to helping startup founders deal with legal issues. Uh, Daniel Rizzi is well known in his, in his segment. Uh, his knowledge is vast when it comes to startups. And I think this is going to be, this is going to be really, really interesting to partake in some of these Vibe Hut meetings on a weekly basis. It starts today at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Vibe Hut. And I assume it's going to be every week. So I'm looking forward to it. And great job, uh, one Dolinsky, for getting Daniel on board. Yeah, great job. And moving on to PBMC, of course, they had an update. Uh, Clay Oglesby posted some information on chain this morning uh, and they held a clubhouse event last night, as we discussed yesterday, they discussed several things. The PBMC Dow will be opening a second funding round shortly. Uh, I believe they raised, <clears throat> they raised a significant amount in the first round. Uh, they'll raise some more in this, in this next round. Crypto kitties. It's going to be back and better than ever uh, with a new artist after PBMC acquired the rights, which we already knew but they're coming back and PBNC and noun one, four, one NFTs will be airdropped to Genesis NFT holders for free. 
also we want to correct an error that we mentioned yesterday. We said that Nathan Wells was affiliated with PBMC. He advised us that he isn't. He didn't. He wasn't upset that we took, connected him to PBMC. He just wanted to point out that he wasn't. I'm sure if he won, if he was part of PBMC, he would probably be not telling us either because he doesn't want to take credit for anything. Yeah, so moving on, uh, DSO yesterday was covered in, actually it was this morning, I believe, was covered in blockchain news, the blockchain.com. And it was also reposted on CoinShots. Uh, the title of the article is MetaMask Integration Unlocks Decentralized Social for Millions of Ethereum Users. So it's great to see them getting more and more media attention. Uh, hopefully it brings more people onto the DSO blockchain and hopefully it gets more, we keep seeing more and more coverage for DSO. Absolutely. And the top NFT bidders over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ, these people bid on the most NFTs on the DSO blockchain over the last day. The Big Mac was number one, followed by BitCloud FR, The Store, Doogee Crypto, Knight 10, Peter H, Robert Graham, Delar Biljik, Block 21, Block 21, Clay Oglesby. And then right. top diamond creator over the last 24 hours, according to our friends at Altenbase. Uh, these people received the most diamonds or tips on their posts and replies in the last day. AK Gris was first, followed by ZN Mead. Rezabian, Dr. Rob, who we mentioned earlier, get well soon, be it me, not you, Mick Marsh, Clout Women Unite, Natter, 044 Peace, and Star Geezer. Yeah, congratulations to all of them. And thanks once again to Miss Katie Ann for providing us with a list of events today. At 10 a.m. Eastern Time is CryptoFi Weekly. Uh, that is Helium Deep Dive with Ben Ersing and Darian Parrish. Uh, that's on Antra at 11 a.m. Eastern time is Doodles Dive, Deep Dive and plus NFT Flipping Masterclass plus NFT Market Analysis with Mario Nawfall and Twitter Spaces. At 2 p.m. Eastern time is Deso Alt Space Metaverse with Daryl Gold, Wildography, Dr. Rob, Mr. Triplet, Restart You, Clay Perry Music, I Am CompuBear, Extinct, Vararishka, Sky Black Tunes, Rhubarb, Spunk Art, Jay Lamb, Anna Natter, Adapt, Our Pete, Salvo, Wendy Lee, Maintain the Reason, GDS, Amber Byers, Nia McManon, Speaking Light, Jotten Jarden, Infrared Artist, Ariana Simpson, ETH, The Devil, Now and Then, Quanti, Stefan Orlando, and many, many more. That was a long list. I wasn't expecting that. Such a long list. Uh, I don't know if all those people are actually going to be there, but they, are, they attend those rooms frequently, I think. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Antra is Double Feature Build a Company from Scratch with Crystal Zhang and Monik Woodland. That's on Antra. And at 6 p.m. also on Antra is New Users Welcome and Walkthrough with Sean Tron. So definitely some great events taking place today. And again, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time is the Vibe Hut, Vibe Hut uh, meeting or office hours. So check those events out. Brian, you're looking kind of bright. Today. Yeah, and, and I, I just want to say, yeah, I just want to say we're bright. I'm bright, especially today, because we're filming this a little bit early in the morning. Ed has to go put his hurricane shutters up, and uh, he wanted to get that out of the way early today because the wind's supposed to pick up pretty soon. Uh, hopefully, we, we're here tomorrow. I think we probably will be here tomorrow. Thursday might be iffy and and depending on our power situation, it could be several days. Hopefully not. Uh, we're Like I said, we're going to continue making these videos regardless. And as soon as we get an internet connection, we will upload them. If I had to drive around and try to find, a, find internet and it's not flooded, I'm going to try and do that. But if you don't see us for a couple of days, the videos are still being made uh, and they will eventually go up. Yeah, so everybody have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you hopefully tomorrow.